let's have a look on load balancing options so when we say load balancing uh, it's not just the NLB you also have other services which are coming from Microsoft Azure so let's have a look on what are those other services which can help us in terms of the load sharing or load balancing we can see that load balancing refers to an effi efficiently distributing your load or incoming network traffic across a group of backend resources or maybe a service so these load balancing aims to optimize your resources use maximize uh, through output and minimize your response time and to avoid any overloading or uh, kind of you know issues on a single resource uh, that can be av avoided or can be eliminated by using the load balancing techniques or the services it can also improve availability by sharing and work workload across redundant computing resources let's have a look on it what are those types or what are the options you have so actually this load balancing can set at global level one is and other one would be the regional level so when we say the global global it means that anything if you wanna do a load balancing services to distribute traffic across regional backends or clouds or hybrid on your premises so in that situation these services route end users traffic to the closest available backend that's where the global traffic comes into the picture and uh, or the global services uh, you can refer in other way so it can be HTTP or HTTPS uh, services they also react to the change in the service ability uh, performance or author to maximize availability and performance so you can think of them as a systems that load uh, balance between application stamps and endpoints and scale uh, scale out host across the different regions and geographies so let's have a look on it what are those for example you can use here uh, as your front door HTTPS is one of the uh, technology that can be used other one would be the again traffic manager so either traffic manager or as your front door these are the things that can are tra uh, that can send the traffic whatever it is coming globally to the closest one but both works for a different purpose so let's have a look on it what exactly the as your front door a front door is an application delivery network that basically provides a global load balancing as I said uh, we are looking into the global so anything is a global loading uh, load balancing uh, we, we are going to talk about these two so as your front door what it does is actually it accelerates services for web applications uh, by working at the layer 7 capabilities and your applications like SSL offload or path based routing or fast failover or caching all these mechanisms uh, can be used within the Azure front door and that would actually improve performance and high availability of your applications now it's time for checking for the traffic manager so the traffic manager is mostly widely used one which is a DNS based traffic load balancer that enables you to distribute your traffic optimally to the services across the global regions as I said you know it's top eight that's why it falls to the global that's why we divided one services uh, as a global other one is the regional so what it does is actually it provides high availability and responsiveness um, because traffic manager is a DNS based load balancing services it loads uh, it, it actually load balances only at the domain level uh, not for uh, not for the other HTTP or other things so it actually look uh, looks at the domain level that means if you're talking about any changes to the domain that might take some time uh, in order to caching our systems to be updated so make sure that you know when you work with the uh, traffic manager make sure that the proper DNS names and other things are already up to date otherwise it might take and it might not work properly now let's jump into the regional one so the regional one comes into the picture with the application gateway either you can use these applications um, gateway like application delivery center in short we also called as a DC as a service which is going to offer again late 7 based load balancing capabilities um, to optimize your web form and by productivity offering uh, or offloading your CPU or intensive SSL uh, termination on the gateway layer so this can work HTTP and HTTPS also now 
other one would be the under uh, regional it would be as your load balancer which is normally we use it so it acts for your TCP and UDP based uh, based on the layer 4 uh, load balancing can happen so it can be geo redundant or it can be high availability across your availability zones by putting into the front end uh, of this and it can also work as a natting also can be enabled within the uh, load balancing so what it does is it, it is a front end let's say you know let's take this itself a one of the uh, services if you think that you know if you place here as a load balancer so what it does is uh, it can in a route either to this region or to this region or to this availability zone or to this availability zone based on the uh, request uh, which is coming up and it also can work as a round robin that means a uh, first user goes to user one second user goes to user three third user goes to user four third that means every input which is coming will be properly shared so that your services will be used uh, properly and uh, you will not get overloaded any point of time and you can configure all these kind of things within the load balancing options so what we have with the Azure load balancing services we have close to four different options so when it comes to the decision uh, you can you know check out you know when we are going to use what kind of you know options so let's see you are actually trying to uh, develop or use a application called web application with the HTTP or HTTP uh, in that situation uh, is this application is gonna uh, is a web application if that's the case it's actually going to here uh, if it is an internet facing application if it is non internet facing application then it can go here and that's where you can you know, think about it do you want to directly place the load balancer to uh, route the traffic either TCP or UDP based or port based mechanism or uh, if it is actually facing internet facing then do you want a global deployment in a multiple region if that's the case you need to know combination of products to be used here if you can see traffic manager with the load balancer because if you remember traffic manager uh, would you know works into the global so that's where it's actually working so you can put as the traffic manager in front as well as the load balancer so now when it comes to uh, if it's a internet facing application and you can you know simply go for if it is not internet facing you can simply go for the application gateway model also which we talked about here it, because it just works on HTTP or HTTPS within the region if it is not on the non region one now if it is a global one definitely global when we say global either any of these should be no use so if it is a global uh, deployment in multiple regions if it since we are talking about the multiple if that's a case yes then do you require SSL so if you see here SSL so you have the front door so that's where it, it says that you know if it is SSL go to the front door with a combination of application gateway because application gateway does that kind of uh, routing within the regions now if it is no uh, SSL then you can host as a platform as a service or uh, infrastructure as a service or uh, Kubernetes services uh, based on any of that and uh, any of that uh, model and you can you know provision with within that with the help of either as your front door or here AKS if that's the case AKS then you would be you no know, ending up with uh, two different tools like a uh, front door as well as the application gateway integration and now if it is an infrastructure as a service as a VM in that situation you can you know just go for a VM with along with that a uh, front door uh, and also the load balancer as a combination now do you you know if you're just uh, looking for the non-global that means uh, we are coming to the regional so let's see if it is a no did you require a performance acceleration if no then simple application gateway would you know help us so if you see most of the places we are actually setting the application gateway because that's where the application gateway knows much about how the uh, application controlling as a service which is running on the layer 7 capabilities so 
let's take about that uh, specific role. Uh, if you see here, this is the application uh, gateway layer. Uh, what would happen is actually your browser when you're actually hitting to uh, one of the gateway IP, front end IP that actually goes whether HTTP or HTTPS uh, listener, here it, it's going to you know, design or verify the rules whether this is going to be a, a where it should go in the back end pool. So that's how it's going to work. Similarly, you can also set another um, when we use more of the products with the along with the application gateway, you see here you have the WAF also here included, uh, which is a firewall based uh, firewall for the application layer, uh, web application firewall. We call it as in a short WAF, which is a service provider for centralized protection of your web application from common exploits or vulnerabilities. So let's understand this uh, specific how. Uh, design if you can you know see here you are trying to open up the console.com so the traffic is going to application gateway so what would happen is it's going to actually securing here with the SSL TLS termination policies and it can also set your auto scaling um, whatever the pool because we are talking about the pools here and it can also be zone redundant it will have a static virtual IP uh, and the, all these features built in within the application layer or application gateway so that would actually help us to uh, route traffic properly that's why you can you know check out here the it's it's more about the regional and it falls into the uh, load balancing services for the regional regional wing but either way this would actually covers all the possible options within the load balancing services within Microsoft Azure cloud as in January 2020 the services let's have a look on it how best we can create these things at the higher level or what are the inputs when we try to create so all you have to do is go to all services within the Azure and go to networking and you have all these 31 as in date uh, the services into the networking so what would uh, we do is we would you know go to the load balancing if I just click on the load balancing this is where you're going to create the normal load balancing so it actually needs the front end and the back end of uh, the services are uh, you when you create even if you are trying to create for a virtual machine when you try to create it for a single VM also we can talk about uh, for example let me show you here if I try to create here VM it will also prompt me to you know put it into the load balancing information or uh, in the networking tab so you have here the option so when you you know uh, configure here for the load balancing as it is it's going to you know place uh, the solution into the behind the load balancing in the back end and uh, that would actually create when while you're creating the VM itself and let's go back to the normal load balance of what we are trying to do here and this is where it's going to ask for the resource name as we talked uh, everything under subscription you have the resource manager as a container and um, that's where all these specific services will be in a placed into that and now you can give the load balance a name all that information once you are okay the public IP information uh, you can you know choose here the choose the one of the public IP information use or existing any of this public IP that's gonna actually should be a free one when you're trying to you know creating a new public IP and then the load balancer will be available and then you are gonna you know assign this load balancer to attach to one of your VM that's how you're gonna do it if not the VM you will be you know attaching to other services wherever it is applicable for your load balancing options now let's jump into the all services and have a look on traffic manager profile uh, this is where it's going to ask for the traffic manager uh, how you want to configure this traffic manager so let's create one of the uh, rules to have our traffic manager to be created so this is actually creating a traffic manager dot net with a name for example here if I give my name as uh, Paddy Maddy so it's going to actually uh, ask me to choose one of the performance based or weight based or priority based so these are the metrics or routing methods which would uh, which would be used on all these options let's say uh, when you use these options like weight based means it's going to actually uh, go and uh, checks for the how much load is actually applicable on that specific machine and based on that uh, it's going to route it same as for the geographic so if it is a uh, users are uh, if the users are directed to your specific endpoints like a, as your external or maybe a nested uh, 
then it's going to be a which ge which geographical location their DNS uh, queries to their uh, originates from. Uh, this imposes actually traffic manager customers to enable scenarios where uh, unknowing a user graph uh, geographic region and routing them to a based on uh, based on that. It's important. For example, uh, examples including compiling and data. Uh, uh, data and mandates localization and content of user experience and measuring traffic from different regions let's say you try to open google.com sometimes it just goes to google.co.in or maybe to your localized uh, website that all happens uh, with the help of traffic manager because it analyzes and it sends uh, that uh, services to be offered uh, to the localized uh, altogether so that's that's a kind of traffic manager this is how you're going to create and uh, let's go back to other services uh, under all within this all services you have here a cdn option so let's talk about the cdn a bit more so cdn stands for uh, content delivery network so as your content delivery network is a global cdn solution for delivering high bandwidth content uh, it can be hosted in Azure or any other location. With Azure CDN, you can cache static objects, uh, objects loads from Azure Blob Storage and web applications or any public accessible web server. By using the closest point of uh, presence, that is a POP, we call it. Um, so it's not a POP service, but it's a POP server. So that's called point of presence. Uh, server so that's the Azure CDN can also accelerate your dynamic content which cannot be cached by leveraging various different network and uh, routing optimization solutions so CDN uh, when you try to do CDN uh, it's mostly used for the uh, web servers uh, web content or video content so that it will be available in that point of corner from where the user is coming so user never feels that there is a latency uh, when you're when he's trying to browse that web application or when he's trying to browse that or watch that specific lengthy video so to make that uh, cached so Azure will take care of that kind of you know, profile or that kind of in a job uh, by creating as your CDN CDN profiles so when you click on a uh, create profile so this is where it's going to ask for that and you need to you know, choose the all available pricing of models uh, it's premium or uh, whatever the you know model standard Microsoft or standard version all these are the very specific but they are gonna because these people have the content delivery servers throughout the globe so uh, it's going to you know, choose a uh, based on the pricing uh, model you can choose like you know I go for Microsoft in that case it's gonna creating a CDN for you and uh, you can choose you know what kind of a CDN it's going to be a web or custom version or cloud services or story specific let's say you have um, a blob storage that want to be um, available as a content delivery network so your users when they're trying to browse within that blob it's gonna uh, available for them all the time and they cached so the nearest point uh, they can pull up for example if I'm in India and I'm trying to download or trying to access a file which is a bigger file or a larger file then I would put it into CD and so what happens is when I try to browse from if I'm uh, from south so it's gonna actually Pull, pulls from me or it's gonna locate the content from South uh, India so that I can easily access that uh, without much latency so that's how it's gonna see the work now let's jump into other services which are related to the networking again maybe you might be wondering that how actually routing tables works so by default routing tables all the routes which is uh, I mean within your network whatever the traffic is flowing uh, between your as your subnets to your virtual networks or maybe to your on-premises networks Microsoft Azure automatically creates the required routings or routing paths automatically in case if you are trying to customize that uh, one of the routing path based on your own requirement in that situation you may have to create your system routes um, uh, by creating the routing table from here or uh, like adding uh, one of the routing table to one of your subnets uh, within your uh, resource like you know here I'm going to enable my virtual network gateway routing uh, propagation and then I can create for 
maybe virtual network for virtual network or maybe for internet or, or maybe optional routes also can be configured based on my requirement like we for maybe for the purpose of VNet peering or maybe for virtual network gateway to you know route this specific uh, uh, subnet traffic to that specific VPN uh, network gateway such things can be done uh, with the help of custom routes